What the f just happened? <laughs> Apple, I, like, I, I don't know what's going on, okay? I stayed up all night for Tuesday because apparently there was going to be a press release at 10 a.m. for new MacBooks. And then the next day, they're like saying that there's a new rumor that's going to be coming out in October. And then today, I just woke up, new MacBooks are out. What the f just happened? Join me in this video. I'm going to be going through every single configuration and letting you know which one you need to get. Oh my God, I'm actually excited. Are you excited? Yes. Oh, All right guys, so I've just ordered my new MacBook Pro. I feel like I'm gonna share with you which one I got, why I got it, and the differences between the 13 inch, the 15 inch, and even the iMac Pro. So let me just show you some of the configurations you can get, explain it to you a little bit more so you can understand why, and let's jump in. So first up, um, I got the MacBook Pro 15 inch, and some, some sort, actually, some sort of headlines I figured I, I'd tell you about is, the 15 inch now has the six core CPU, and the CPU just came out this quarter, so it's, it's brand new. It's the fastest one on offer. It goes up to 4.8 gigahertz. That's insanely fast, okay? It's got a, a bigger battery, but the problem is um, we it's now using something called DDR4 RAM, which uses more battery when the, um, the laptop is on standby mode, so it could, it might not have more battery life. It might just be the same or worse, depend or even better, depending on your situation. The graphics card, now, everyone's saying that it's a rebrand of the current graphics card that's in the 2017. However, in my, in my findings just now, apparently it's 30% faster. I don't know if this is real life situations, but I'll show you the, the stats also. Good thing about the RAM here is it goes up to 32 gigabytes. So that's gonna be pretty slick. I, I've got a, MacBook Pro 16 at the moment and I haven't had any problems with RAM. It's more about performance or if I'm trying to use too much apps or too much calls at the same time. But having more RAM is gonna be definitely helpful for you or the option for it. And you can go up to four terabytes in SSD storage. Now, it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg, but it's available for you. And I'll talk you through it right now, actually. Let's just go through it. So looking at the processor here, and it starts off with a 2.6 gigahertz base versus 2.9 gigahertz base. They're both six cores. Now six cores means you can get faster compiling code, you can get faster video editing, you get, um, when it comes to exporting or transcoding or background rendering, you can run more apps on your computer without it chugging. So six cores will make it very, very healthy and sexy, something very, very good for you. Now the difference between the i9 and the i7 it's very negligible. It's about 10%, 10% difference. Now this 10%, uh, is it really gonna help you out in life? Probably not. It's more about having the two extra cores. However, branding wise, the i9 sounds so sexy not to, not to do with it. Something also interesting to point out about between these two processes is they're both made the same way on the same manufacturing process. The difference between these two is Intel selects the best crop that they um, come out and they make that the i9 and the ones which aren't as good, they just downclock it, use a slower, uh, make it run slower, and they sell it on. So potentially, you might even be able to downclock the CPUs yourselves or slow down the fan speeds yourself, so it's a quieter Mac experience, but have it run at the, the slower speeds. It's something we can play with in the future. Okay, memory, 640 for 32 RAM, but the good thing about this RAM is faster, so it's 2400 rather than 2100. 32, you just, if you're getting a machine like this that's soldered in, you pretty much want the best RAM you can get. Oh, it depends on your situation, really. I've gone by by 16 gigabytes. I think vanity wise, I want to get 32 because I feel like it'll be able to allow me to have more apps running in the background and just avoid the chug. So right now I've got a one terabyte SSD drive and I'm running out of space here and there. If I did get a two terabyte drive, it will help me out in life. Right now, I've got an external two terabyte drive and I pretty much have to carry this everywhere I go. It can be troublesome, you, it, it makes everything very awkward. <sighs> now, if this computer is fast enough, I'm gonna play around with what I can do. Right now, I need to run everything in proxy with my current system, which means transcoding every single video file I have into an easy to play version of it. Now, this takes up a massive amount of space, which is why I've got the two terabyte drive floating around. Potentially, if I can now edit on the 4K original files themselves, I might not need that much space. 
because I'm running most of my files off a of NAS drive. Now, I don't, I don't really know how much four terabytes will, will benefit me. I'm gonna have to just see and find out because it's very expensive. Like you can see it's an extra $3,200 to go from two to four. Um, I'm just gonna go with the four see if I am using the, the extra space. If I'm not using the extra space, I'll probably buy another one, return this, this Mac and, um, and just get that. The great thing about Apple is they do give you a two weeks grace period. So you play around with a computer for two weeks and you can return it as long as you, you don't damage it. So that's it. As you can see here, four terabytes and 32, I'm pretty much just getting the, the best option. And look at that price. That's, that is just stupidly insane. 10,300 $39 and that's not even without Apple Care yet. Something I want to tell you, if you do not need a, a portable laptop, consider getting an iMac Pro because check this out. If you're going to be spending that much money, look at the same configuration here. You get eight cores here, 32 gigabytes RAM, Vega 56, four terabytes. It's only 11,500. This guy, 10,300. So it's only an extra thousand dollars for an iMac Pro and you get a 27 inch screen. <sighs> hmm. Something to consider though is on the iMac Pro, they are running enterprise versions of the hardware. So this Intel eight core CPU, it may not give you the best experience compared to one of these CPUs. Although it has more cores, it misses things out like um, there's something called Quick Sync by Intel. And what that does is it allows you to transcode and encode videos a lot, lot faster than by using software because it has a hardware encoder. Now, enterprise versions of the Intel CPUs don't have this. So you might actually be getting better performance in some situations with the MacBook Pro. But I mean, you can get a 10 core over here. You can get even 64, 128 RAM. Look at this, you can get a Vega 56. Now, a Vega 56 is five times faster than the graphics card you get on a MacBook, MacBook Pro. So, boom. Now, I wanna go in some stats with the CPU. So over here, I've got a comparison between last year's maximum CPU and this year's maximum CPU. And, all right, what I love about this website here, I don't know if you can see it, the best speeds that they've got for the CPU is turboing at 3.8 gigahertz. The best speeds they get for this latest CPU is 4.5 gigahertz. So that is 4.5 divided by 3.75. That's a 20% increase in speed. So you're getting up to 50% increase in cores and a 20% increase in natural speed when the fans are going full on blazing. So you're getting a really, really fast system on the i9. And the difference between the i9 and i7 on offer, it's very negligible. It's only about 10%. So you're probably just better off getting the, the six core base one. Let's see, so it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money to consider. $500, but um, it's good that you have these options. I, I love that you have the options. Now the graphics card, now this is a bit subjective here. I'm gonna show you some stats on the graphics card. So the Radeon Pro 560 over here. Now this is the graphics card that was in the MacBook Pro last year. And that has 1.9 teraflops. Yeah, you with me? That's good. Because the 560X, it says it's maximum max performance is 2.6 teraflops. So according to the specification, you're getting 30% increase in speed between the 560 of last year and the 560X. I wanna see it before I believe it because everywhere I've read, they've said that it's just a rebrand and it's only gonna be about 1% faster. I wanna find out. Again, if you are getting an iMac Pro, you're getting Look, look at that, you're getting 10 teraflops. And if you upgrade the iMac Pro to Vega 64, you're getting 12 and a half, 12.7 teraflops. So if you're doing a lot of 3D graphics and you don't need the portability, yeah, an iMac Pro might be better for you considering it's only an extra thousand for a five times extra performance on the, on the graphics. So that's just something there to consider. But I am a bit relieved but by looking at these stats, because at least the graphics will be 30% better. So yeah, because if it was the exact same graphics card and it's just a rebrand, that's a bit disappointing. But again, let's just go into it. I'm going to show you now the 13-inch the version. 
Now, the great thing about the 13-inch version, oh my God, they all have four cores. So you've gone from a dual-core system to a four-core system. So the system that's now currently on offer is pretty much on par with the 15-inch MacBook Pro from last year. Now, if you watch any reviews about the 15-inch MacBook Pro, they say, if you're serious about coding, if you're serious about video editing, you gotta get the 15-inch version. Well, now you have the same rig of the 15-inch into the 13-inch. Now, let me show you some stats on the CPU. So over here, we've got some comparison between the i7-8559 GPU, and this is the i7 version of the 13-inch, and this just came out this quarter as well, I've got to tell you that. Now, maximum speed is 4.5 gigahertz. It's actually potentially faster than last year's 4.1 gigahertz of the 15-inch last year. That's when one core is running. So if you've got one process and you, you, you're running it, you're hitting it, it, it can run a lot faster than last year's. When all cores are running, last year's one can go up to 3.7. This one goes up to 3.5. The cache is slightly less than last year's, but it's, honestly, it's pretty much the same. Obviously, you've got a better graphics card that we'll talk about later. And it can encode and decode um, H.265, which is very useful and all that stuff, but it's pretty much on par with last year's version. So you're getting a pretty much 100% potentially increase, depending on the applications you use. If you're doing video editing, if you're doing coding, it's pretty much 100% increase because you've got two more extra cores there, doubling the amount of cores. That's amazing. The difference between the 2.7 and the 2.3, again, it's you're only gonna be getting really 10%, not that big of a difference, but the fact that it's quad core. So if I was thinking about saving money, I'd get the cheaper one, and um, well, it depends on your use case, you know, if you need the performance, if you were just say, for example, using the 15 inch of last year and you're happy with it, you can probably get a 13 inch now. All right, you got very similar RAM as last year, so that hasn't improved, but what you do get here, and I'm really excited about this, and, and no one gives Apple credit about this, because if you go for a Dell, if you go for any other computer, usually they max out on offering one terabyte of storage probably because they know that no one's crazy enough to go for two or four terabytes. But over in Apple, the 15 inch can go up to four terabytes and the 13 inch can now go up to two terabytes. Two terabytes. I mean, I'm very, 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 very tempted on ordering the 13 inch and just um, and getting that instead because 13 inches, it's so, so nice to travel with. If you're on a plane, it can fit onto the, the table. If you're driving around, you can chuck it in a car, you can take it out in a restaurant. The 15 inch, you really need to be obnoxious. You need to annoy people. You just have to do it. It's just too big to be sensible with it. I'm not an annoying kind of guy. Maybe I am. Okay, you guys can judge that. But in real life, I try to be very courteous. I don't tailgate. I'm a nice guy. So I like to be aware of my space. So I'm going to see how it works out with the 15 inch because if I need four terabytes, I'm okay. No one needs anything, but four terabytes makes a big difference to my workflow if I'm faster. If I find out that the space is useful for me, I'm just gonna stick with it. If I do think that I can downgrade to a two terabyte or one terabyte, I'm gonna can really seriously consider the 13 inch. Because the fact that it goes two terabytes is so, so good. For you guys though, it depends on your budget. I've, as I said, I've been using one of these um, two terabyte SSD drives. They run really fast and they're a lot cheaper than what you pay for in Apple. So this guy I got for about 500 pounds, which is about a thousand Australian dollars. Over here, the Apple sells a terabyte for 1,200. So it's about a third of the price that Apple will sell you with. The good thing about having it built into the system is you can really just move your laptop without having all these things plugged in. So it really depends on your flow. That's a 13 inch for you. Going from a 13 inch to an iMac Pro, it's an extra $3,000. So I say, if you're thinking about a 13 inch, then I discount the, the iMac Pro. But if you're going for a 15 inch MacBook Pro, it's only an extra thousand for an iMac Pro. That's very, very, very interesting. So I'll be interesting to see how it performs because something that I hate about MacBooks and um, you, can't, you can't hear it at the moment because I've turned down the fans. But if you're doing anything performance related, the MacBook Pro's fans just it sounds like a jet engine. It makes everything difficult. So the good thing about the iMac Pro is it's a silent computer. So that's something else to consider here. The thing about I love about Apple, they offer something called AppleCare. Now AppleCare, I really recommend you get it. It covers you an extra three years of warranty and it even includes um, accidental damage. So you can get your MacBook completely replaced for two 
two times. So it's pretty much like the iPhone phone deal there. You can get your screen replaced, you can get everything replaced and it's covered under the insurance package. You will have to pay in excess. It says about 179 for the screen and up to 400 and something for other repairs. But it's a complete peace of mind because if you damage another laptop, my experience has always been very, very, very difficult. So I'm really happy. I, I totally recommend getting Apple Care budget for that. And the good thing about Apple is you, they give you two weeks to decide for Australia. A lot of companies here don't like returns. They don't like exchanges, they don't like change of mind, they don't like anything. With Apple, you can get it, you can play around with it for two weeks and you can change your mind. So I'm excited to go for that. Let's see the journey. Um, now, a couple of tips here, okay? If you have a mate who's in university, or if you have a mate who's educational, or if you're a teacher, or if you're a student, ask your friends, ask your relatives, because Apple give educational discounts. So you can get up to 10% off your order if you order via the educational store that they have and all you need is an educational purpose. So if you're buying it for your mate who's uh, in uni, you get his uni card, or his or her uni card, and you can get a cheaper deal. A lot of people do this, make sure you do that if you have the ability for it, unless you're a, a corporation, I guess you wouldn't wanna do that because you wanna make it a business expense. Or maybe you do, I don't know how it works. Actually, also, if you're a business, if you um, contact um, Apple, they will refer you to their business um, for their work teams and they give you around 8% off. So you can also get business deals with a lot of money off that way. So make sure you contact the Apple stores. You can even go to a branch and they'll refer you. They'll give you a specific email address. You can get a business discount or you can get an educational discount. Make sure you go there. Secondly, if you are ordering from Australia, make sure you use a website. This isn't sponsored, by the way. It's Cash Rewards. And the great thing about that is they give you 1% cash back on Apple. So let's just see Apple over here. 1.4%. And I'm sure there's equivalent websites all over the world. Like in the UK, I think there's something called Quidco. In America, I'm not sure. But if um, cashback services, they can also give you extra money for ordering Macs. For example, this Apple Store for Education gives you up to 1.4% cashback. Now, if you're buying a system that's $6,000, 1% is actually $60. So it's, it's, it's worth it. You get to play around with it. All right, guys, I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or any tips for me, things to understand, let me know in the comment section below. I just wanted to share my initial thoughts on the release. I'm very, very excited about it, especially about after finding out that the 560X isn't just a rebrand. I'm gonna be getting my system on the 23rd of July and I'm gonna be running the most strenuous performance tests I can. I've learned a lot, lot over the last few years testing Macs, so I've got some really good tests. I wanna compare it against the Mac Pro, I wanna compare it against the iMac Pro, I wanna compare it against my current generation Macs. So I'm gonna give it a nice test for video editing, coding, parallels, bootcamp, all that kind of stuff. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and vamos. Something I'm really excited about is taking my current Mac to get it repaired, seriously. The keyboard obviously is doing that double typing stuff, it's a, it's a bit of a wreck at the moment. Like programming is such a nice a nightmare, programming is such a nightmare, typing in your password is such a nightmare. You know, you type a key once and it like spits out multiple times, but I've been hanging in there because I cannot afford to spend two weeks waiting for them to fix it. Also, my battery life is a mess. Seriously, when my battery gets to 50%, it just shuts off the computer. There's so many issues with the 2016 MacBook. Obviously, I'm getting a 2018 MacBook, so I really hope they fix those issues.